Hello viewers, in this lesson we will learn about the features and administration of the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. To learn about the legislative history and features of the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. To learn about the powers of the central government to make provisions on the export and import policy. To learn about the penal provisions, appeal and other issues under the act. Viewers, now we will learn about the legislative history and features of the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. Legislative History Foreign trade plays a very pivotal role in investment decisions of the promoters to invest their capital. The foreign trade comprises of imports and exports. Economists define foreign trade as the exchange of goods and services among the nations across their international borders. Imports mean the physical movement of goods into a country from another country. Exports mean the physical movement of goods out of a country. The imports and exports make the world as a global village. The country in which the movement of goods takes place is called the importing country and the traders involved are called importers. The country from which the goods move out is called the exporting country and the traders involved are called the exporters. The central government has enormous powers to regulate and control the foreign trade in India. Earlier, the foreign trade was controlled and regulated by the Imports and Exports Control Act 1947. This enactment was repealed by the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. Salient Features of the Act The central government is empowered to make provisions for the development and regulation of foreign trade by facilitating imports into and augmenting exports from India. The central government is empowered to prohibit, restrict and regulate exports and imports in all or specified cases and also grant exemptions. This act empowers the central government to formulate an export and import exim policy from time to time. For administration of the act and also for advising the central government in formulating exim policy the Act provides for appointment of a Director General of Foreign Trade by the Central Government. The Act provided enormous powers to the Director General to administer the Act. The Government of India formulates the exim policy in accordance with the provisions of this Act. The salient features of the exim policy are as follows. A. The policy must be designed to ensure sustained growth in the exports of the country so that it may attain a high share in the global market. B. The policy must safeguard the interest of the domestic consumers by providing quality goods and services at a competitive price on par with international market. C. The policy must ensure the enhancement of the technological strength of the country and also enhance the efficiency of the agriculture and industrial sectors, production of various goods and services. D. The policy must ensure raising of the capacity and competitiveness of the Indian businessman to fit into the international market. E. The policy must ensure the generation of more and more and also new employment opportunities. The Government of India announced the new exim policy for the period from 1st April 2015 
to 31st March 2020. The Foreign Trade Development Regulation Amendment Act 2010. The Government of India, in order to meet certain requirements of the international markets like tighter export and trade control, ensuring conformity with commitments to WTO and other international agreements and further to ensure protection to the domestic industry for the growth and development of Indian economy brought major amendments to the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992 through the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Amendment Act 2010. Features of the Amendment Act this amendment act has incorporated safeguard measures by imposing quantitative restrictions on imports, trade, control and further establishing controls similar to the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems, prohibition of unlawful activities act 2005. The definition of import and export is expanded to include technology and services specified under the General Agreement on Trade in Services GATS, entered into between India and other country in order to administer the incentive schemes and other provisions of the foreign trade policy. The central government is empowered to impose restrictions on increased import of any article if it causes or threatens to cause serious injury or overall impairment to the position of the domestic industry. Import and export of goods, services and technology in relation to special economic zone is governed by the Special Economic Zones Act 2005. The penalty for contravening the provisions relating to import and export is enhanced. Penalty for signing any declaration knowing that it is false is provided. The provisions of the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems. Prohibition of Unlawful Activities Act 2005 is made applicable to export of specified goods, services and technology. After these amendments, no person can export any material, equipment and technology, knowing that such material is intended to be used to manufacture biological, chemical or nuclear weapons or other nuclear explosive device. For contravening the provisions related to specified goods, the penalties under the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems, Prohibition of Unlawful Activities Act 2005 are made applicable. Several other amendments are brought into force in order to strengthen India's trade policy and regulations. Structure of the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. This act consists of 20 sections under 6 chapters. Chapter 1 consisting of sections 1 and 2 deal with short title and definitions. Sections 3 to 6 under chapter 2 relate to the power of central government to make, order and announce export and import policy. Chapter 3 under sections 7 to 9 deal with importer, exporter code number and licensing. Chapter 3A contains section 9A dealing with the power of central government to impose quantitative restrictions on the import of certain goods in the interest of the country. Chapter 4 consisting of sections 10 to 14 deal with search, seizure, penalty and confiscation. Chapter 4A contains sections 14A to 14E on the power of central government and controls on export of specific goods, services and technology. Sections 15 to 17 
under chapter 5 pertain to appeal and revision. Sections 18 to 20 under chapter 6 deal with miscellaneous provisions like power to make rules and repeals. Viewers, now we will learn about the powers of the central government to make provisions on the export and import policy. Sections 3 to 6 contain the relevant provisions on the powers of central government to make order and announce export and import exim policy. Before these provisions are examined, it is necessary to know about the terms like import, export, services, goods, technology and like ones as defined under the act. They are narrated here under. Clause E2, section 2 of the act defines import and export as follows. Import and export means 1. In relation to goods bringing into or taking out of India, any goods by land, sea or air. 2. In relation to services or technology, supplying services or technology, A. From the territory of another country into the territory of India, B. In the territory of another country to an Indian service consumer, C. By a service supplier of another country through commercial presence in India, D. By a service supplier of another country through presence of their natural persons in India. 2. Supplying services or technology. A. From India into the territory of any other country. B. In India to the service consumer of any other country. C. By a service supplier of India through commercial presence in the territory of any other country. D. By a service supplier of India through presence of Indian natural persons in the territory of any other country. Provided that import and export in relation to the goods, services and technology regarding special economic zone or between two special economic zones shall be governed in accordance with the provisions contained in the Special Economic Zones Act 2005. Clause J to section 2 of the act defines services as service of any description which is made available to potential users and includes all the tradable services specified under the general agreement on trade in services entered into amongst India and other countries who are party to the said agreement provided that this definition shall not apply to the domain of taxation. Clause K to section 2 defines service supplier as any person who supplies a service and who intends to take benefit under the foreign trade policy. Under clause I to section 2, specified goods or services or technology are defined as the goods or services or technology, the export, import, transfer, retransfer transit and transshipment of which is prohibited or restricted because of imposition of conditions on the grounds of their being pertinent or relevant to India as a nuclear weapon state or to the national security of India or to the furtherance of its foreign policy or its international obligations under any bilateral, multilateral or international treaty, covenant, convention or arrangement relating to weapons of mass destruction or their means of delivery to which India is a party or its agreement with a foreign country under the foreign trade policy formulated and notified under section 5 of the act. Clause M to section 2 defines technology 
as any information including information embodied in software other than information in the public domain that is capable of being used in one the development production or use of any goods or software two the development of or the carrying out of an industrial or commercial activity or the provision of service of any kind according to the explanation to this clause for the purpose of this clause a when technology is described wholly or partly by reference to the uses to which it or the goods to which it relates may be put it shall include services which are provided or used or which are capable of being used in the development production or use of such technology or goods public domain shall have the same meaning as assigned to it in clause i of section 4 of the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems prohibition of unlawful activities act 2005
before passing any order the adjudicating authority must give a fair opportunity of being heard to the charged person sections 14a to 14e pertain to the controls on export of specified goods services and technology by the central government under section 14e the contravention of the provisions under section 14a to 14c the penalty shall be in accordance with the provisions of the weapons of mass destruction and their delivery systems prohibition of unlawful activities act 2005 and no court shall take cognizance of any offence punishable under the provisions of this chapter 4a without the previous sanction of the central government section 15 of the act contains the provisions on the appeal any person aggrieved by any decision or order made by the adjudicating authority under this act may prefer an appeal a to the central government against the decision of the director general b to the director general where the decision is made by an officer subordinate to the director general the director general may authorize any officer superior to the adjudicating authority to hear the appeal the appeal must be filed within a period of 45 days from the date of receipt of the decision or order the appellate authority can condone any delay not exceeding 30 days a detailed procedure is laid under this section and a fair hearing must be given to the parties before disposing the appeal review under section 15 the central government is empowered to review either on its own motion or otherwise the decision or order of the director general the director general is also empowered to review the decision or order of his subordinate officers the detailed procedure is laid under this section and a fair hearing is mandatory section 17 of the act contains the provisions relating to the powers of the adjudicating and other authorities for the purpose of adjudication or hearing any appeal or exercising any powers of review under this act in this regard all the powers of a civil court under the code of civil procedure 1908 while trying a suit is applicable pertaining to summoning and enforcing and the attendance of the witnesses evidence production of documents and like ones miscellaneous provisions sections 18 to 20 contain the miscellaneous provisions like protection of action taken in good faith rule making power of the central government repeal and savings well viewers i hope you have enjoyed this session we'll meet again thank you